All right, so now we're going to talk about macros. Now, a macro in World Machine is a series of devices grouped together in a single node to serve some sort of function. I'm going to go to worldmachine.com, and if you click on the Community tab on the top right, it'll take you to the, you know, the forums and the, the member posts. But at the bottom, there's a Macro Library button, and if you click that, there's all these quick macros that users have contributed. Just click Download Coastal Overlay right there. And now if you pop into your downloads folder, you'll see it. It should be called coastaloverlay.dev. And you want to go into your documents folder, wherever that is. Usually it's in, under your user. So click documents and there will be a world machine documents folder. And go into macros and paste your device in there. In this case, I had a duplicate, so I'm going to rename it. So we'll go to the macros tab, which is the third over and click that little folder and check coastal and select it and load. Now I'm going to go to output and overlay view on the right side and we plug our output from erosion into this, but we also pipe it through the coastal overlay and that gives us a, a preview node. So anytime we click on overlay, we're looking at the height map in, in combination with the coastal overlay. So I'm going to go to device view and lock my preview on overlay and then I can go into 3D mode and actually change the coastal overlay settings while still having this on the, the large screen here. Now the max cliff slope we can dictate where the how far the grass creeps in to the, the sides, beach height and water height. Now these are just colors so it's not changing anything with your actual geometry or your height map and these colors can be changed so in CryEngine, you already have water automatically, so you don't necessarily need to color the water. So that's something you can you can change the color on and give you more available variety. So here's what this looks like now, built at 2048. So some really nice details, and you can see there's a lot more um, definition with this with this coastal overlay. That's why a lot of people are using it. It gives you kind of a jump start in your your Photoshop texture. All these nice grooves and the flow masks are are carving into it and the grass is, seems to spread more naturally than if you just use one of the set terrain colors. Now we actually are going to go into our macro. So you can double click this and hit enter macro. And this is these are all the devices that that macro consists of. And you can see I'm going to go back to my top level and unlock the preview so that we can view the individual devices in Coastal Overlay. So we enter it once again. And if you see the macro out is everything that's getting spit back out to your top dev top level device view and macro in is what was going in to the coastal overlay everything in between are just a ton of different functions that are available in world machine and they're just zipped together so if you click on each one you could kind of explore and figure out which um at which at what stage you want to save some of these textures and before we do that we need to add some output slots here. So if you double click your ma macro out, you can add ports. And if, if it's going to be a color texture you're saving out, you want to change the setting to bitmap. Otherwise, height field is the default for grayscale, just like with the output nodes. So this isn't creating any, any textures at the moment. It's just setting up slots for us to plug them into. So we have our grass mask, AO, diffuse. You can make as many of those output nodes as you want. So now I'm taking the diffuse color from the top chooser. I plug it into the diffuse slot. And I think this is the AO here, so I'll plug that in as well. And around here there, I'm gonna kind of organize this a little bit. And this looks like the, the grass mask right here with this combiner. So I'm gonna plug that into grass mask. Now I want to change the simple sand. I want to use the Perlin noise with the colorize to get more variation. So I'm going to copy and paste those devices after deleting the sand and I'll plug that into input B. And it's even though it looks really daunting to to work with these and these macros once you enter them, 
you know, it's, it's easy enough to see how they're put together and you'll, you'll learn a lot if you just kind of follow the network and you can swap things out, change colors and, and uh, kind of experiment. So I definitely encourage that. So I'm just picking a little different, a couple different colors. I, I don't want the sand at this spot. I, I want it to be kind of a richer dirt color. And I'll do the same thing with the grass. I'll change that up, maybe a little more dried out, just just uh, so we notice the difference. And that's it's not necessarily better, but it looks different. So that'll work for the purpose of the demo. All right, so now I'm going to click back on top level. I have all the, the output nodes that I want to save out. So I'm going to move my bitmap file. This is where I, I saved out the previous diffuse, so I can just reuse this and update it. I plug my diffuse over there and I have two height outputs that I'm going to need to add so I go back to the output choose height output and plug that in to AO once again choose bitmap and set the file name and we can click save the file every time world machine is built that way you don't have to constantly go back and manually update it but since i had just built i'm going to do the right output file to disk manually right now on each of these and we do the same thing for the grass now this mask is just going to make it easier for us to select things in photoshop that's the sole purpose of the the mask and our flow mask and our height map haven't changed at all because we haven't changed anything uh, to do with the, the previous node network. Here's our new built level. So I'll save this and we'll hop into Photoshop and prepare our diffuse texture again. Now let's speed it up. We're basically doing the same thing to the diffuse, ambient occlusion and flow mask here. We're dropping the layers on multiply and we're trying to blend them together nicely. And now we have our grass mask that we can drop in and use that in the alpha channel. So if we move that over and click to channels and paste it in alpha we can control click that for an easy mask which allows us to change the color so that's one of the advantages of using coastal overlay the macro you have a lot more control over your individual layers and we'll just drop it in our our level we loaded the height map already and we changed the layer painter grid size and voila we have our new level so I hope this series has been very informative for you, and I encourage you to go through our other videos and flesh out this world. Thanks a lot.